Hello and welcome to Flight Training Apps, your aviation training partner. In this app, which is a follow-up to our 430 approach and in-route apps, we're going to show you how to use the Garmin GTN 650 and 750 touchscreen GPS receivers. First, let's take a look at the COM and NAV functions. The easiest and fastest way to change COM frequencies is to use the large and small rotary knobs to enter the frequency in the lower standby box. Touching the top box switches it to the active frequency. An alternate method of changing COM frequencies is to touch the standby box, then enter a new frequency, then touch Transfer. Now, let's take a look at the map setup by touching Map. The default setup is the best for most pilots where desired track, track, ground speed, and distance are arranged as shown. If you would like to display different fields in these locations, touch Menu, then Change User Fields, then each field you want to change. In the example here, we will change the distance field to estimated time in route by using the up and down keys or by scrolling to select ETE. Touching back returns us to the main map page screen. Now that we're finished with the map setup options, let's take a look at the traffic options on the home page by touching Traffic. It's important to understand the basic traffic display symbology. Diamond shaped symbols represent aircraft that are within 1,200 feet of your altitude and also within 5 miles. Yellow traffic advisory symbols and voice warnings occur when a combination of closing rate, vertical separation, and distance meet traffic advisory criteria. Favorite flight plans can be easily stored for future use. Here, we'll create a flight plan by touching Flight Plan from the home screen, then Add Waypoint, and select a nearby airport and touch Enter. To store this flight plan, touch Menu, then Store. The Waypoint screen, accessed by scrolling down on the home page, provides a wide array of information on airports, intersections, VORs, and NDBs. For example, touching airport, then info, displays information about the destination airport elevation, fuel available, and latitude longitude coordinates. Touching procedures shows all approach, arrival, and departure procedures. Touching runways shows runway direction, length, surface type, traffic pattern direction, and pilot controlled lighting frequency. Today we're going to fly from our home airport at Gillespie Field to the famous airport of Catalina on Catalina Island. Before we taxi, Let's take a look at how we can use the 650 to plan our flight. Now that our flight plan is entered, let's take a look at a couple of other useful planning tools. From Utilities on the home screen, we'll select Trip Planning. 
the from and to fields are already filled in correctly from our flight plan. So we'll touch point to point to select flight plan mode. Then enter our departure time, departure date, and anticipated ground speed of 120 knots. Then touch Compute Data. Finally, we have reached Catalina Island, one of the most beautiful scenes in the aviation world. Now we're going to demonstrate how to use the GTN 650 to set up a standard terminal arrival route, or STAR, and standard instrument departure route, or SID. We will also demonstrate how to set up and fly an obstacle departure procedure, or ODP, using the OBS, or Omni Bearing Selector, function. Finally, we'll fly a localizer performance with vertical guidance, or LPV approach including the MIST approach procedure. There are some important differences between the GTN 650-750 and the older GNS 430-530. Here's some you'll want to know about. These differences are the same on the 650 and 750, so we'll only demonstrate them on the 650. To go to the default nav screen from any other screen, press and hold the home key. To perform this function on the 430-530, press and hold the clear key. You can also twist the big and small right hand knobs all the way to the left.